Hello, welcome to another module in this massive open online course and uh, in this module we will change tracks and start looking at an extremely uh, different topic and an extremely important topic in understanding the performance and behavior of communication systems which is termed as information theory. Okay? So, as I have already alluded this is going to be very fundamental and it is one of the fundamental milestones in understanding the behavior and in also designing better and more efficient communication systems. So, this is termed as information theory. Many of you must have heard of this at uh, several in several different settings correct. So, information theory and as I have said information theory is fundamental it is something that is very fundamental to understanding and characterizing the performance of and in fact information theory is not only although originally intended to study communication systems it has evolved to encompass a variety of applications such as economics uh, probability stock markets, investing and so on. So, the applications of information theory are, are vast and ubiquitous. All right. However, in this course as part of this course we will restrict ourselves to the fundamental concepts in information theory and their relevant applications in the context of communication systems. Okay. So, we are going to change tracks as I have said and start studying information theory and basically to describe information theory or the relevance of information. Let us go back again and look at the structure, the fundamental structure of a digital communication system which we have looked at in one of the very first lectures. So, we have in every digital communication system, we have a source and the source produces messages which are led to an encoder correct. So, I have a source I have an encoder the source produces message signals. So, the source produces message signals So, the source produces message signal and the encoder encodes them into a stream of bits as we have seen before encodes messages to produce. So, the encoder encodes message signals encodes message signal produce a stream of bits. All right. So, we have shown here a typical stream of such bits. Okay. Now, the question is obviously these bits are going to be transmitted over the channel. Let us look at it. Let us take a simple example. So, the bits are going to be transmitted over the channel naturally that requires bandwidth right that requires usage of the channel all right and technically one would like to minimize the usage of the channel so for a given amount of spec so for a given amount of resources for transmission let's say in terms of the channel bandwidth or the time one would like to transmit well 
the maximum amount of information or what would I to con remember communication is all about con conveying information over a vast distance right from point A to point B or even in a broadcast kind from point A to several points right. So, typically we are interested in conveying the maximum amount of information using the minimum number of resources or to put it other way we would like to we would like to have a minimum number of bits which signify the channel uses the number of times we have to use the channel. So, we would like to have a minimum number of bits encompassing or encapsulating a maximum encapsulating the uh, encapsulating the maximum amount of information ok. So, typical so that is the motivation. So, typically we would like. So, how many bits so how to so typically we would like convey the maximum possible information using minimum resources such as time or bandwidth. Okay, purposefully being a bit abstract, which implies we would like to encode the messages, okay, which implies we would like to encode or represent each message fewest possible number using the fewest possible number of bits right. In other words, we would like to compress a lot of information into a very few number of bits and information theory is nothing but a systematic study to enable us to do this, enable us to compress or enable us to represent a large amount of information in very few bits or in very few uh, which thereby utilize very few channel resources thereby using conveying information efficiently using as few resources as possible ok. So, essentially so for that so this is what information theory enables us to do information theory enables us to precisely do this. precisely do this that is represent maximum information using very few or basically maximize information per bit you can also say that maximize information maximize the information content on a bit by basis maximize the information content per bit ok. And uh, now we all know we are very familiar with how to characterize characterize aspects physical aspects such as 
or let us say characterize, let me be able to more explicit characterize physical attributes. such as you know the weight of an object the height for instance the volume etc several other aspects but how does one characterize something ab abstract as information okay so these we are familiar with So, we are familiar with how to characterize the physics, but how does one characterize something abstract such as information correct. such as the information content for instance every day we are exposed to several sources of information right from personal communication uh, from watching uh, for instance let's say sources such as the tv so such as broadcast media such as the tv or newspaper or several other sources from our day to day communication or what we or through hearsay or so on so through a variety of modes we access a lot of information but we never really stop to think about how does one really ca capture the information content for instance when you see a piece of news we intuitively feel that some news right carries more information than other kinds of news or some kind of communication has more information or when a particular person is speaking he typically conveys more information than someone else is speaking so how do you characterize something that is something that you cannot feel so how somebody you characterize something that is as abstract as information which is tremendously useful and information theory does nothing but provide us with a means to the tangible a means to characterize to uh, tan, uh, to provide us a tangible measure of this of this otherwise uh, abstract notion of information okay so that is what information precisely does okay information theory is nothing but provides tangible measure so that you can precisely characterize what is the information of one source versus the other okay so so naturally the information content of a source Uh, so uh, naturally and this provides us a mathematical framework okay so information theory is a mathematical framework we are talking about a, not a qualitative but a quantitative framework rather okay we know qualitatively what constitutes more information okay it's an objective measure or a mathematical framework or you can also say as an objective measure removed from personal percep perception that is the important aspect because different people might feel that the information content is different and more importantly this is a mathematical framework or a numerical framework or it is a quantitative framework okay not just simply a qualitative framework but a quantitative framework. And central to the notion of information theory, if you look at information theory, central to the notion of information theory is the concept of a source, a source of information.
So, we think of information as being generated as a, by a source, this source can be several things for instance can be people who generate the information or things such as uh, a next higher layer such as a source such as for instance the internet or source such as for instance the TV from where you find information right which basically conveys information in some sense to you all right. So, there are several sources which generate the information ok. For instance, when you are talking to your mobile phone it is a human being who is generating the information which is later encoded which is later the voice which is digitally sampled and encoded and converted into bits. So, there are several sources of information ok. And, uh, now, information theory as we have said is a mathematical framework to characterize the information generated the average what is the information of a source. So, we also talk about what is the information it can be a physical it can be a living object information or information generated what is the information generated we talk about this. information generated by a source. What is the information generated by a source? So, we would like to characterize the information generated by a source. Okay. So, let us typically consider a source as we have said a source generates messages. Okay. So, the source let us say generates source let us say generates symbols S0, S1 so on up to S m minus 1. In fact, this is a discrete set of symbols. So, you can also call this as a discrete source. They can also be continuous source. Okay. Continuous sources can also exist which we will deal with later. So, discrete source implies generates a set of discrete symbols. Okay, generates a set of discrete set of symbols. generates a discrete set of symbols. Uh, for instance, this S0, S1 up to Sn minus 1, this is the symbol set. Okay. This is the and this is also termed as the source alphabet. This set is also termed as the source alphabet. So, we have a set S consisting of symbols S0, S1, Sm minus 1 generated by the source. This is also termed as the this is also termed as the also termed as the source alphabet. So, this is also termed as a source alphabet. And further, the source is generating this alphabets, this various alphabets at various time instants according to a certain probability distribution, right? According to a certain probability. So, if it is a continuous source, it generates a continuous, it takes uh, values from a continuous range with a probability density function. Okay. Now, we have a discrete source which is generating discrete symbols according to a set of probabilities. Okay. So, the symbols. this is the system model or this is the model of our source which is generated. According. To a
symbols are generated according to probability distribution. We have probability of the symbol S naught equals P naught probability of the symbol S 1 equals P 1, so on and so forth. Probability of the symbol S m minus 1 equals P m minus 1. And naturally, it goes without saying that from the axioms of probability, obviously, these satisfy the axioms of probability from the axioms of probability again I urge everyone to take revise their fundamental their knowledge or revise the concepts of probability and random variables. We must have each p i greater than or equal to 0 every each probability has to be greater or equal to 0 and the summation of all the probabilities belonging to the source alphabet has to add up to 1. So, all the probabilities have to add up to the 1. Now, let us come to the concept of the information content of a symbol S i, the null let us come to this concept of and how to characterize the information content of a symbol how to characterize information content of a symbol or basically how how to characterize the information content of a symbol and for that we are going to define the information of symbol S i, I S i this is basically your information of symbol S i as log to the base 2 1 over the probability S i equals log to the base 2 1 over P i okay, 1 over P i and there is a unit for information the unit is bits. Okay. So, we are defining this is a very interesting and this is one of the fundamental definitions in information theory. We are defining the information content which was which we said is not very clear or which is a rather abstract quantity. So, the information content of a symbol. So, this is the definition of information content of a sim of Now, observe something very interesting. First of all, I will talk more about this definition and uh, definitely talk a lot more about this definition as we go through the, uh, the various other aspects. But firstly, observe the most important thing is that the information, uh, the information of the symbol has nothing to do with uh, how the symbol is itself is represented S i rather it is everything to do with the probability p i of the occurrence of the symbol. For instance, the symbol can be a word, the symbol can be a voltage level, the symbol can be uh, for instance such as an event. So, it does not have anything to do with that particular symbol, uh, but it basically deals with the probability of occurrence of that symbol all right? and that is the important thing to observe. So, it depends i s i the information of the symbol depends on the probability of occurrence of the symbol. Depends on the probability of occurrence of the symbol. Further, you will observe
further i s i is proportional to 1 over p i. It is not proportional, it is not proportional to p i, it is rather proportional to 1 over p i. I s i is basically log to the base 2 1 over p i, which means if p i tends to 0, if p i tends to 1 that is it occurs very frequently i of s i tends to log 1 to the base 2 equals 0. If p i tends to 0 then i s i tends to infinity and this is the this is a very important aspect it shows that lower that is symbols which have lower which have a lower probability of occurrence have a much have much higher information associated with them. So, symbols or events which have a very flow, low probability of occurrence have a have much higher information content associated with them. Okay. So, that is the important, so that is the important takeaway point from this. So, symbols or events with very low probability of occurrence have higher information content. So, symbols which have a very low probability of occurrence have much higher information content. And uh, so, therefore, rarer events, events which are rarer, which are very low probability have higher information correct. So, example right, rare events rare events have higher information. Think about for example, news. The news coverage is focused on such rare events. For instance, if an event occurs on a daily basis, for instance, such as a local happening which occurs on a daily basis, that is not things such as that do not are not covered in the news because they do not constitute. Typically, we know intuitively that they do not constitute much information. So, events which occur very rarely, such as uh, happenings on a national scale, or let's say uh, uh, such as happenings on a national scale, or calamities, right? More prominently, calamities deserve a lot. So, calamities attract a lot of attention. All right. So, coverage of such events, right? Such rare events. Which, which do not happen very frequently attract. So, the rarer the event, the more information it, it the more information it contains. So, events which events which occur very frequently contain less information. In fact, you can think of even sensational events such as events which do not occur, events which are against the norm, events which are against the convention, such events are assumed are associated with a large information, a lot a lot which deserve which are said to deserve a lot of attention because they have a lot large amount of information. So, for instance, the other aspect is you can think of sensational events. The very definition means that means that against the these such events are against the practice, these are unprecedented or unconventional. or unorthodox all these basically carry more information
and attract a lot of attention and therefore attract a lot of attention or warrant or attention. So, as to speak colloquially make our heads turn because they seem to carry a lot of information. So, the most important aspect correct. So, uh, I would like to summarize this by saying once again that these rare events or sensational events, events which are rare right. So, these rare events which means rare events which means and we are using this 1 over p i, we are saying that the rareness of an event or the relative infrequency with which an event occurs is proportional to 1 over p i this is a measure of 1 over p i is a measure of p i is a measure of the frequency 1 over p i can be said as a measure of the relative infrequency such or basically 1 over p i is large implies frequency or events are infrequent. implies such events such events are infrequent and therefore carry a large amount of information okay so what we have seen in this module is basically we have started with a with a very uh, a very high level introduction to information theory we have motivated uh, this feed with the this area of information theory, what is the relevance of information theory and we have basically started with a brief description of the system model and the setup of information theory. Also characterized a fundamental definition of the information content of a particular alphabet belonging to the set belonging to the source alphabet of a source. We will start with this definition and further keep refining it progressively and look at various other norms, various other measures to characterize the inform information content of a source and the relevance of all these aspects and the relevance in fact of this whole area of information theory in communications in our future modules. Thank you very much.